On the news, army freezes, freeze over 160 Boko Haram captive, arrest dozens of insurgents in northeast Nigeria. Police arrest wanted mastermind of Abuja bank robbery. And Turkey moves to deploy troops to war on Libya. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Anetta Philip. The Nigerian army says its troops has arrested 84 Boko Haram insurgents and rescued 161 captives of the sect during various operations in northeast Nigeria. The Nigerian Army Operations Media Coordinator, Colonel Aminu Ilyasu, in a statement in Abuja on Thursday, said the operations were carried out in conjunction with the troops of the Multinational Joint Tax Force. Ilyasu says the rescued persons include men, women, and children. In the statement, Ilyasu explains that the rescued civilians have been conveyed to a humanitarian facility in Munguno and handed over to officials of the Borno State Emergency Management Agency. This follows the destruction of several Boko Haram camps at Abolum in the Sambisa forest area of Bornu State in an airstrike by the Air Tax Force of Operation Lafiadoli. In a statement, spokesperson for the Air Force, Air Commodore Ibikuni Darmola, said the execution marks the commencement of Operation Rattlesnake 2, an air interdiction operation aimed at taking out some identified insurgent camps and logistics facilities. The mastermind of the failed bank robbery in the Impape area of Abuja has been arrested by the FCT Police Command. The suspect, simply identified as Ennis, was arrested on Thursday at his hideout by police detectives. He is currently being questioned at the FCT Command Headquarters in Garaki, Abuja. The police had earlier arrested four suspects and gone down the fourth member of the bank robbery during the fraud attack last Saturday. While being paraded on Tuesday, the suspects told the police that an employee of the bank who worked in the customer service unit led Saturday's operation. But the bank on his part said he was blackmailed into the robbery by Ennis, who is a customer of the bank. Personal assistant on new media Bashir Ahmed has denied reports that gunmen attacked an Abuja-bound train. Some of the yet-to-be-identified gunmen had on Thursday, January 2, 2020, reportedly attacked a train heading to Abuja from Kaduna. The train which left Rigasa train station was reportedly attacked near Katari village in Kagago local government area of Kaduna. Reacting to the viral reports, Ahmed said he was unable to reach out. He was able to reach out to the management of the Abuja Kaduna train service and he was told nothing like that was reported. He noted that the news was entirely false and urged Nigerians to disregard it. Still on security matters, Ekiti State Governor Karide Faemi has confirmed that the Joint Southwest Security Outfit, Amoteko, will be inaugurated on January 9th. Faemi, who made this known in his New Year message, said the outfit would complement the efforts of the regular security agencies. The new security architecture was initiated by the six governors in the Southwest to curtail armed banditry, kidnapping, and killings in the zone. Ahead of the launch, FireMe urged community leaders and groups not to allow themselves to be used to cause unnecessary tension that could trigger the crisis. He assured residents at the state, residents of the state, that the launch of the new security architecture will ensure rapid improvements in the new year. National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Sashamale, has assured Nigerians that President Muhammadu Buhari will deliver on his New Year promises to the country. President Muhammad Buhari, in a letter to Nigerians to mark the New Year, pledged improved infrastructure, power, and economic development in 2020. Addressing the State House correspondent after a cutsy visit to the president at the presidential villa in Abuja, Oshamali described President Buhari as a man of his word, stressing that the New Year will be better for Nigerians. We came essentially to assure the president that most well-meaning Nigerians are with him. They appreciate the hope. And the challenge now is to work hard to ensure that all of those promises that he has made, he will deliver in 2020 
that we keep our word because our word must be our bond with the people of Nigeria. And as a party, we are conscious of the fact that it is the performance of this president and of this government that will be the basis for approaching the electorate in 2023. And so we are clear that all our creative energy, whatever opinion, advice, observation that we have, all members of APC, rank and file and leadership level, must find time to reflect and contribute ideas on how to ensure that by this time, 2021, we'll be able to look back and say, President said, I will deliver on X, Y, Z. At the end of the day, he did. And then we have a message for 2021. I think this is how nation grows. There's always a time lag between when decisions are taken and when they mature. And the responsibility of leadership is to be able to carry the people along as you commence the process of rebuilding the country and in our shared commitment to take Nigeria to the next level. Senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, is asking the federal government to release Ibrahim el -Zaghaki, leader of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, IMN, in a letter dated January 2nd and addressed to Abubakar Malami, the Attorney General of the Federation, Falana said he is making the request in line with Buhari's pledge to respect the rule of law. In his New Year message on Wednesday, the President had promised that his government's actions at all times would be governed by the rule of law. Falana restated the court orders granting bail to El Zaghaki, asking the federal government to comply with all court orders of the Federal High Court and the Kaduna State High Court. On December 2, 2016, the Federal High Court, presided over by Justice G. O. Kolawale, declared the arrest and detention of El Zaghaki and his wife Zinat as illegal and unconstitutional. The court then awarded them 50 million naira as damages for their illegal detention, ordered the state security service to release them from custody and provide them with a house since the Nigerian army had burnt down and demolished their abode in Zaria Kaduna State. But Falana stated that the federal government has refused to comply with the court orders. Ozaki and his wife have been in detention since 2015, when some of his followers clashed with soldiers in Zaria, Kaduna State. Workers have resumed work on Thursday after the New Year break. After about 10 days lull, the central area of Abuja is gradually coming alive again. TV360 Nigeria spoke to some Nigerians in the FCT who demand better infrastructure and good governance in the new year. Traders selling their goods in numbers are the first sign of activity speaking up as workers resume on Thursday at the Federal Secretariat in Abuja. Although the turnout is still low, normal activities have started in most ministries as workers could be seen going about their work, the roads are getting busy again and the traders are returning to their usual stands. Some Nigerians who spoke to TV360 are asking the government to do more in 2020 in the area of infrastructure, youth unemployment and payment of new minimum wage. In terms of the economic development of the country, with the budget cycle, what Mr. President have done, I think all the previous president have not done it. That one is a pass mark to Mr. President. For us to have even come back in budget cycle of 1st January 2020, I want to commend Mr. President for that. Well, I commend Mr. President, I would want him to, to strictly observe the budget distribution. Releases must be done adequately so that it will affect the grassroots. Because the total population of the grassroots is, the, of this country are the, are the grassroots. And one other thing I would want Mr. President to do is that he has to engage all the youth, the unemployed youth of this country. Because the, 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 the unemployment is at alarming rate. I want uh, the government to, first of all, you know, increase uh, and pay the minimum wage for civil servants. Though I'm not one, but for the sake of those people that, that are one, that uh, government should first of all do that, you know, to lessen the suffering of Nigerians in this 2020. I will talk about the electricity, 
at least if there is stable electricity, that things will be going on. The cost of fuel automatically reduce when there is stable electricity. Then good roads, good roads will still be like some areas in Abuja, the capital city, the roads are bad. So they need to work on the roads, unemployment, they need to work on unemployment. There are so many youths on the street of Nigeria, no work, no job, nothing to do. So they need to work on unemployment too. Since the holiday celebration is just ending, it is expected that full activities will return to all ministries next week. Odisha Wadushoga, TV360, Abuja. Political leaders have been advised to prioritize public interest in the year 2020 to ensure succor for the masses and address many social problems. These were the opinions of worshippers at First Baptist Church, Karaki Abuja, to mark the New Year celebrations. Paul, Pastor Paul Enenche has expressed optimism that the year 2020 holds a lot of promises for Nigeria. Enenche, while speaking, uh, said this while speaking with TV360 Nigeria on January 1st, 2020. Meanwhile, another clergy uh, said the new year will be one to remember for the right reasons and urged Nigerians to brace up for an upward spiral in all facets of the economy. I believe that one of the things that we must do to really make everybody have hope in Nigeria is that we have to sit down and say the truth to one another. Kidnapping, killing, herdsmen that are killing, this is, this is factual, it is happening. We should stop overlooking it. Let people come together like they did uh, before independence. There were people from the north, the east, the south, the west. They jointly worked for the independence of this nation. Let us jointly sit down and say, our nation is getting destroyed. We need to forgive ourselves. Leaders, the followership, north against south, south against the north. We need to forgive ourselves. There are a lot of bloodshed. So we need mercy. As a young person, I'm hoping that there'll be better employment, there'll be jobs. I'm hoping that people will be able to see great health care, experience, great friendships with people, experience a better culture in Nigeria. That's what I'm hoping for. Our leaders must be sincere. They must be sincere. They must be committed to the principles of leadership. They must lead well. If they do not lead well, there is no example for the young ones at all. We have prayed, we have prayed, and we have prayed, and we are still praying. And there is a witness in our spirit that God is hearing our prayers, has heard our prayers, and we are to expect a shift in level, in dimension. We are to expect a spiritual explosion, especially as we make ourselves available to get closer to know God. We are to expect God to move in unusual ways over our land, such that things will not continue the way they have been. Kwara State Government has demolished a popular building in Ilori, owned by the late Olushala Saraki. The building, popularly known as Ili Arubo, was located at the Ilofa Road in the government reserved area of Ilori. Residents of Ilori said they, wake, they woke up to meet bulldozers carrying out the demolition as early as 3 a.m. Men of the Nigeria Police Force had taken over the place in the last 48 hours to forestall any breakdown of law following Tuesday's process by some old women against the government's decision. The building was a place where the late Saraki used to distribute food, money and clothes to old women, a tradition the former governor of the state inherited. Governor Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak had on December 27, 2019, revoked Saraki's title to the land over illegal, alleged illegal possession. The Chief Press Secretary Rafi Ajakaye said in a statement that the title was revoked to build a new government secretariat that it was meant for. According to him, the land was unlawfully allocated to a private firm without any record of payment to the state government. Bukola Saraki, however, reacting to this, said the property was rightfully allocated to his late father in the name of one of his companies, Asha Investment Limited, since the 1980s. An audit report has shown that the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, NTDC, has failed to return its unspent balance of 8.6 million naira at the end of the 2016 fiscal year to the Consolidated uh, Revenue Fund, CRF. The 2017 report is the latest by the Auditor General and was recently made public. 
The infraction is a violation of Section 414 of the financial regulations, which requires unspent balances to lapse for the financial year. The Auditor General of the Federation, Anthony Aide, directed the Director General of the NTDC to remit the unspent balance to the Consolidated Revenue Fund and forge the evidence of remittance to the Office for Confirmation. The Auditor General of the NTDC during the period of the infractions was Sally Mbanefo. The current Director General of the NTDC, Fulo Rushokuka, uh, were not, was not the Director General when the infractions occurred. He assumed office in April 2017, but however, he was the Director General when the audit was conducted and the report was released. We'll take a break now and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Corruption not in my country. <laughs> that was a very good uh, business. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the furniture you, you, you brought was very perfect. <laughs> but that's how we roll. I'm going to let me do uh, receipts. Yeah. How much of it again? Uh, uh, one million naira. Okay, write 2.5. Mm, the deal was uh, for one million uh, naira now. Okay, write three million. I'll give you five hundred. Um, oh no, I just do business like, <laughs> like that now. Yeah. Hey, Dakis, give me back my check. Let me go and look for something that understand business. Take. <laughs> Your loss. Uh, uh, it is only for incorruptible customers. What are you talking? Now get out. What, what, what kind of this? You will just die. No, 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 no. You will die. Is that, that is the door. Now get out from here. Rubbish. Look, my people. Make me only add money for original invoice price. That's not corruption. Say no. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. On DG360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. Constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, Wait. DG360. Providing clarity to issues. Thanks for joining us on the business segment of the news. The national leadership of the Nigeria Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nupeng, has issued a seven-day ultimatum to Chevron asking the oil firm to recall 32 workers who were recently dismissed. The union in a statement condemned the directive from Chevron telling its contractor to sack 32 workers for insisting on being Nupeng members. According to Nupeng, the sack, which was carried out at the twilight of 2019, was in a bad taste and an affront to labor and workers' rights. The Nigeria LNG Limited says it has paid over $7 billion as taxes and issued more than $15 billion as dividend to the federal government since it started operations. NLNG's managing director, Tony Atta, who disclosed this recently in Abuja, also stated that the company had the target of extending its LNG production trains from 6 to 12. Atta, who spoke at a ceremony where the joint venture partners in the company took the final investment decision for NLNG Train 7, noted that the gas firm would expand its LNG trains to 12. LNG is an incorporated joint venture owned by the federal government, represented by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation 40, with 49%, Shell with 25.6%, Total with 15%, and ENI with 10.4%. The gas firm has been incorporated for 30 years and has been in operation for 20 years since exporting its first LNG cargo in 1999. Let's now take a short break here and return with review of stock market listing.
The first trading day for the year 2020 started on a positive note at the NSE. Investors kicked off activities with high optimism, supported by developments in the fixed income and money market space. Now, today, key market indicators rose by 0.10%. And as at the last trading day of 2019, the market capitalization, which stood at 12.958 trillion naira, edged up today by 12, um, to 12.97 12, uh, uh, trillion naira. And that's about 12 billion naira increase. Now, the biggest equities in the market came in as the highest gainers today, with MTN Nigeria leading the pack of 22 gainers as its share price increased by 4 naira to close at 100. And nine naira today. We also see that um, Dangote Sugar came in second with a 40 cobble price gain ahead of First Bank of Nigeria Holdings as well as um, uh, Vitaform, which were all uh, the toast of investors today. However, on the flip side, the losers for today, we see Seplat and Wapco actually suffered a similar fate, um, both recording declines from previous highs. Seplat shared in. Uh, 65 naira 70 cobo to close today at um, 592 naira and um, one cobo and we also see as well that um, wapco a big gainer from previous session opened the new year with a loss of one naira and 50 cobo closing today at 13 point it, uh, it, it 13 naira and 30 cobo bad opener as well for unilever and Stambik IBTC Bank. And in summary, the level of activity today was stronger. And this is where the huge turnaround or trend reversal, if we can call it that, is. The total unit of shares traded today stood at 264.103 million units. And that's a very wide margin when compared with the over 1 billion shares which were traded on the last day of 2019. And the sum of that came up to 5.2 billion naira, revealing a difference of about 200 and 65 million great start no doubt for the nse let's now turn to the foreign markets to see how um trading is going it's actually a positive start for FTSE and nikkei but we see nikkei remained unchanged with 0.76 percent decline and that's it on business we'll now go on a short break and return with more give him his shoes somewhere here his phone and uh, everything don't do like that to Leno. Thank you. So, <laughs> bye bye. Hey, where do you Oga, huh? Where do you think you are going? Who? Oh. You never shake body. Eh? Yeah. You never shake body. Shake wait, body, wait, see? Wait. Huh? You never shake body. Eh? Yeah. You never shake body. I don't get combo for my body. You go take for here. Sit down, down. Man. What's this man still doing here? They say I do shake body. Uh, I shake body, I shake body. They say I do this. They, and I say I don't get cobble. You are asking for money. Sorry, Sorry ma'am. Asking for money to bail a suspect is an act of corruption. Both of you will be punished. Corruption is not allowed within the force. Remember, police is your friend. Giving and taking bribe is wrong. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Corruption not in my country. Turkey's parliament on Thursday passed a bill approving military deployments to Libya. According to the government, the aim is to show up the UN-backed government in Tripoli. The motion passed by 325 votes to 184 follows a request for assistance by the Tripoli government, which has been under sustained attack since April by military strongman General Khalifa Haftar. Meanwhile, Egypt condemned the move, saying the deployment could negatively affect the stability of the Mediterranean region and called on the international community to urgently respond to the move. Since longtime leader Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown in 2011, Libya has not had a stable government. Efforts to demobilize and reintegrate fighters who helped topple Gaddafi into the formal society, into the formal security apparatus, has largely failed. Latin Ibrahim Movic have signed a six-month deal with Serie A giant AC Milan. The 38-year-old, who arrived in Italy earlier today for a medical ahead of rejoining the club, has an option to sign on with the football outfit for a further year. Milan are currently 11th in Serie A and suffered their heaviest league defeat in 21 years just before the winter break when they lost 5-0 at Atlanta. The former Manchester United striker has been a free agent since leaving LA Galaxy in November. He scored an impressive 53 goals in 58 matches during his time with the Major League Soccer Outfit.
That's it on News Now on TV 36 Nigeria. I am Aneta Philip. Thanks for watching.